use basic terminology when you're talking to your patients. And I get this from the students as you know we're, we're doing our dialogue or the calm. They'll say, okay, Ms. Jones, take an inspiration. <laughs> okay. Expiration, they don't get that. Just say, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, hold. Okay, basic terminology. All right. The evidence of collimation is demonstrated. We've got our left marker. Left marker is good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no motion. Sharp outlines of rib markings and diaphragms and lung markings are demonstrated. Um, time. Longer. Do we need long time or short time? Long time. Short time. Okay. So we're holding, okay, holding the breath will minimize any movement over here, but one thing that we can't control is heart motion. Okay, so that's another thing that you want to take into consideration is you have a quick exposure time. All right, so long scale contrast, that means more grays. Vascular markings are demonstrated. T-spine ribs seen faintly through the heart. Do we see it through the heart? Mm -hmm. Do we see T-spine? Do we see behind the apex of the heart? Mm -hmm. Good chest x-ray? Yep. Yeah. Very good chest x-ray, okay? Be real careful. Well, it's pretty close to clipping off this, this uh, margin here of the rib, okay? So get everything included. APCs, claustrophrenic angles. Okay, be careful how you pay, uh, position your patient. All right, any questions? Okay, let's talk about the lateral chest x-ray. Lateral chest x-ray from the PA. I'm gonna flip them off to the side now. Arms up, out of the way, okay? Get it up. Avoid any tilt. Press their chest up on the board, but don't press their hip up on the board because otherwise they're gonna do this. That's gonna cause tilt. Make sure they're perpendicular and upright. Now, do I need to make any adjustments on my central ray? I already got it on my PA. Do I need to adjust my x-ray tube? No. It's already at T7, right? Is it already at T7? Yes, it's already at T7, right? That was actually, okay, <coughs> I usually don't do trick questions. That was a trick question. Mm. Okay, it's not on the test. Okay. So although you're at the level of T7 for your PA, you're going to drop your central ray about a half an inch to an inch about a half an inch to an inch. Why are we doing that, Dr. F? You sound so stupid. Okay. Remember your divergent beam? This is what's gonna happen. You have your two lungs. You have your left lung, which is up against the image receptor, no magnification. It's true to size, right? Now your right lung is gonna be a little bit further from the image receptor, you're gonna have magnification, yes? Here's the other thing that's gonna happen because of your divergent beam, it's gonna throw that right lung down past your image receptor. Okay, so we're gonna drop it about a half an inch to an inch to include the claustrophenic angles of the right lung. So from the PA, okay, I'm gonna set up, drop my extra tube about half an inch to an inch, okay? I move my x-ray tube, what else am I gonna move? My tube comes down, what else is gonna come down? True. My image receptor, my bucky. Those two things have to line up. So if you move one, the other one follows. So if I drop it about half an inch, my image receptor is gonna be dropped about half an inch. All right? Now, here's the other thing. Let me see what we've got going on here. Okay, so lower about two centimeters from WAP. So the, the wider the patient, the more uh, you have to drop your image receptor, but it's approximately about half an inch to an inch. All right. Um, need another volunteer. Nick, you're up. All right. <laughs> All right. Mandatory volunteer. Huh? <laughs> Let's have you up here. Uh, place, so uh, Ms. Jones. I need you to push your hands on top of your head. Yeah. Top of your head, elbows together, chin up. Okay. And then I'm going to place them up on the board, but no tilt. I don't want to push this in. 
he's going to be perpendicular, straight up and down, okay? Elbows together. His elbows out is going to create greater OID, so I have him put his elbows together so he's closer up to the image receptor, all right? Putting him in a true lateral, palm of my hand, back of his, in the back of his back, okay? So I'm making sure that my hand, as I'm feeling for his back, is perpendicular to the image receptor. So I'm feeling for his back, and I adjust them accordingly until my hand is perpendicular with the image receptor. Central ray is going to be mid-sagittal plane, so this is where my central ray is going, right here at mid-thorax, mid-coronal mid plane, sorry, mid-coronal plane, MCP, okay? Now, remember I said my hand is going to be perpendicular? This is what I'm gonna do now. I'm going to rotate him slightly, are you guys watching? I'm gonna rotate him slightly about an inch. Real subtle, about an inch. You guys know why I did that? Remember the divergent beam? It, only, it doesn't only diverge this way, it diverges this way. Right. So the purpose of rotating them slightly is to make sure that I've got one set of posterior ribs. So the rotation of his body is matching the divergence of the beam. Okay, it's all because of this right side. We bring the image receptor down to make sure we're not cutting anything off from the beam's divergence this way. We rotate him slightly with his right shoulder forward because of the divergence of the beam going from side to side. I'm trying to mesh the divergence. Okay? All right, go ahead. Thank you. Okay? <coughs> Questions? Yes. So after your hand is perpendicular, mm -hmm. then you rotate the end. Right. So I'm going to get him perpendicular first, and then from there I will rotate him slightly. I didn't mean slight. Because if you don't, you can end up with uh, two posterior ribs instead of one. Okay. okay. All right, so entire lungs are low, uh, included. Um, and here's another reason why I can drop my image receptor. I don't want to cut this off, but it's so thick up here, I'm not going to see the APCs. I will see my APCs on where? Your PA. On the AP or the PA. So it's going to be a little bit lighter up there. That's okay because we'll get it on the other shot. But what I want to make sure that I don't do is I don't cut the angles off, okay? No rotation is demonstrated by one posterior rib. No more than one centimeter of separation between the ribs should be demonstrated. <coughs> chins and uh, chin, not chins, chin and arms are out of the way. <laughs> Might be chins. Yeah. <laughs> Might be chins. <laughs> yeah, chins. With equal collimation. Now, when you're doing a PA, most patients will be done with their image receptor this way. When you do a lateral, it's going to be lengthwise. Okay? So for PA and AP, it's crosswise. What do you guys call this? Landscape? landscape. What, do you call, what do you call it, Evelyn? Is it landscape? <laughs> okay, landscape. Okay. Landscape or portrait? This is portrait, right? Is this portrait? Right? portrait? Yeah. Yes. And this is landscape, okay. Okay, so this way for AP or PA, this way for lateral, okay? Okay, same thing applies here. So even when you're doing the lateral, take a deep breath in, blow it out, take another deep breath in, blow it out. Now you're watching them. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, click. All right? Again, it's just natural that you're with the patient, but the moment that you step away, they think, what are you doing? And so they move and they want to see what you're doing. So make sure that they're not moving and they're following directions before you take that, uh, before you take that x-ray. Okay? Any questions here? Is this an acceptable x-ray? It's a very two, acceptable x-ray. Aren't there the two sets of posterior? No, there's only one. Okay, but again, the thing is the rule of your oh, right, right. Okay. thumb rule, or rule of thumb. Okay? Uh, I'm witty. Okay, one centimeter separation. It's acceptable. I only see one set. Yeah. Where's the second set? It's superimposed. They're superimposed. Unlike this image here, where they, you, it's obvious that there is rotation, which is right... 
way back, right there. Say one set versus two sets. We only got one set here. Any questions about dropping the image receptor and the tube about half an inch to an inch? And then from the lateral, we're also going to move the patient right side slightly forward to uh, accomplish that one set of posterior ribs. Okay? All right. Those are your two basic views. Now we have here the AP supine or semi erect. Uh, lateral decubitus, AP lordotic, and then our obliques. Okay. So, patient can't stand up. These are just a couple of variations. Um, you can put them up on the chessboard if they're sitting on something that will keep them stable. So, here we have them sitting on a gurney. Uh, here, there is no chessboard. They are just using the imaging plate where the patient is hugging it. So they're just sitting on a, on a gurney without the the, uh, the grid, the grid holder, okay? So their arm is just right, uh, is hugging the image receptor there. Now, this is where you might see some also some variations. You will see technologists doing a chest x-ray with and without a grid. And your technical factors are going to vary, okay? It's one of the exceptions Although it's greater than 10 centimeters, you can do a chest x-ray without a grid. What are we trying to accomplish there? What's the whole purpose of the grid, first of all? Yeah. It's to remove scatter radiation so you get a more black and white image. Well, we kind of want long scale for a chest. So you'll have techs doing a chest x-ray without a grid because they're trying to accomplish that longer scale. But in doing so, keep track of your techniques that they give you for a gridded procedure and one without a grid. Okay? So it'll be lower on that one, right? It's gonna, be, it's gonna be lower. Yeah. So my KV is gonna stay the same. Like if I use a grid, I'm gonna probably use about 110 at about uh, 8 to 12 mass. 8 to 12 mass on an average size patient. If I did it without a grid, KV is gonna stay the same. <laughs> and bless you, and cut my mass dramatically. Or I can keep my mass the same and cut my KV dramatically. You don't do both, remember it's one or the other. Because otherwise if you start uh, messing with all your technical factors, you're gonna get lost. So manipulate one or the other. So if I, guess if I left my mass alone, and let's just say I kept it at about eight to 12 mass, my KV would then be about 70, 75, instead of 110 over here. You guys will learn this. Make sure that when you guys start your clinical practice, have a little notepad and you can start writing all your technical factors in there or, or get a technique book. Have the students showed you their technique books? Some have purchased a technique book. One, they just made one with a little address book. Okay, if you want to save, save money that way, you can do it that way too. And as you're doing this, on your category for chess, you will probably have about 20 sets of techniques that has been given to you by 20 technologists. Okay? And so you just kind of pick and choose which one works for you, for your style, and then narrow it down as you guys progressively get better and better and, and uh, uh, you become more solo. Uh, I've been told this looks like me <laughs> from the back side. <laughs> Nah. It's because it is, guys. <laughs> it's not. Is it. <laughs> your back's hairy like that? <laughs> is there is there hair? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an actor. That's shadows. Oh, shadows. <laughs> shadows. <laughs> I'm Asian. I'm hairless. <laughs> <laughs> All right. AP. AP supine or F AP semi erect. Okay. <coughs> We try to avoid this at all costs because again, the vessels become engorged and you can't see fluid levels. So this would be a better way of doing this. But if your patient's in ICU, 
they've got lines sticking out of all their arms and their neck, and they're going, they're, they're um, being assisted with some kind of uh, respirator. So you can't move them around, so you have to do a supine, okay? When they're like this, you gotta somehow get the imaging plate underneath the table, uh, underneath the patient, right? This is on their bed or their gurney. How are you gonna do that? Okay, well first of all, don't be afraid to ask for help. If you go to the emergency room and you go to ICU and you've got a patient who's dead weight like this, get somebody to help you so they can help brace the patient and you can slide the image receptor underneath. What works very well is that if they are on a gurney or if they're on a bed, the sheet underneath them is usually made of some kind of slippery nylon material, so it's easy to get that plate underneath them without any help. Okay? But otherwise, get help, don't be afraid to ask. Okay? So if I place my image receptor behind the patient, who's like this, I want to make sure that the edge of my image receptor is equidistance on both sides of the patient. Okay? Top border. I'm going to place the top border at the level of the vertebral province. province of C7. Okay? And then I will line up my x-ray tube accordingly to my image receptor. They gotta match up. Is it is it axial projection or is it perpendicular? Pardon me? Is it an axial projection? Okay. Question was is it an axial projection? So I'm just gonna I was just gonna uh, talk about that. Your your x-ray tube is not gonna be perpendicular to the image receptor, which is one of the biggest mistakes of doing portable x-rays like this. Okay? It's not Again, it's not perpendicular to the image receptor. When you are doing an AP, okay, any AP, whether supine or semi-erect like so, your center ray is going to be perpendicular to your sternum. Not the image receptor, it's perpendicular to the sternum. And that's why, Nick, you notice it said, well, how come it's axial? Well, it's because it's matching the angle of the sternum. The sternum's going up like this. It's perpendicular to the sternum. Okay? Same thing over here. It's not perpendicular to the image receptor. It's perpendicular to the sternum at the level of T7. Okay? Top of the image receptor is at the level of uh, vertebral problems of C7. This is the best way to, again, uh, make sure that your cassette and image receptor is is the middle of the cassette is at T7, is by using the top border of your cassette. All right, same thing applies. Take a deep breath in, blow it out, take another deep breath in, and click. Okay? All right. And you're saying for these, most likely we won't, we won't get 72 inches, right? Yeah, you're not gonna be able to get 72 inches. Now, especially if you're doing supine so like this. So this may have to lower our technical factor. At least, right? at least with this you can, because you can just bring your portable back, just roll it back until you get that max, um, max distance of at least 60 inches. But if they're laying down like this, your tube can only go so high. And the, and the bed can only go so low. Okay. All right. Here's another thing also, is when you're doing AP, you can also, if they can, have the patients just roll their shoulders forward, if they can. Okay, have them roll it forward to get the scapula out of the way. Second breath, do it on the second breath to get as much um, volume in the, in the lungs. Now, when you're doing supine or even semi-erect, you're not gonna get the t a total of 10, 10 ribs, because when you're upright, naturally what's gonna happen is your diaphragm is gonna drop. When you're laying down, it's gonna come up. So you may not see 10, you may see between eight to nine, and that's acceptable for these type of x-rays, okay? So similar to the PA, except the heart appears a little bit larger. Okay, why does it appear larger? Because of OID. Not only OID, because you're not gonna be able to get that 72 inches. inches, so you may be a little bit closer, giving you the magnification, okay? So heart is gonna appear larger. Air and fluid levels are not gonna be as well defined. Frequently not a complete inspiration because only eight to 10 ribs will be demonstrated. Do we have any rotation on this patient? 
Some of you guys are falling asleep, so I'm going to dim the lights up a little bit better for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any rotation? No. It's equidistant, right? Yeah. How about penetration? Can we see behind the, the heart? Can we see the, uh, the T-spine, and can we see behind the heart shadow? Not really. Okay, mm -hmm. not really. So this could have been shot a little bit better. Okay. A okay, lateral chest. Um, again, these are for patients who cannot stand up. So these are some variations. Um, if they're on either, if they're on a gurney or gurney or a bed, you need to prop them up because if they are sunk into the bed or the wheelchair, you're going to get the arms of the wheelchair or the side railings of the bed inside your view, and you're not going to. It's going to cut off the posterior uh, part of your lungs. So you want to prop them up. Okay. Bless you. All right, let's talk about our decubitus. Decubitus. <clears throat> the purpose of the decubitus is to evaluate for air and fluid levels. So if your patient can't stand up, they're going to lay down on their side. They're going to lay on the side in the area of interest. Okay. So if in previous x-rays they've had issues with the right lung, with fluids, they're going to lay on what side? Right side? The right side. If the issue is on the left, you're going to lay them on the left side. left side. Now before you shoot the x-ray, I'll talk about position here in a moment, but before you shoot the x-ray, when placing them on their side, you don't take the x-ray immediately. You want the fluid levels to settle, so you may have to wait about maybe five minutes or so before you make an exposure. Okay? So once you get them on their side, wait about five minutes or so. Now in doing so, when you get them on their side, you want to prop their chest up, because remember the divergent beam, if they're not raised high enough to place them in the middle of the image receptor, you're going to cut off the lateral border. So we want to raise them up a little bit. Okay? Criteria doesn't change. I'm going to place my image receptor at the level the top of the image receptor at the level of the vertebral prominence, C7, and then I will match my central ray accordingly to my image receptor at the level of T7. Everybody understand that? Okay. When on their on their side, make sure again, just like any other chest x-ray, there is no rotation of the shoulders, there is no rotation of the hip. We want to keep it one unit from here to here with no rotation. Any rotation of this or the hip can change the overall look of your radiographic image. So maintain the hips and the shoulders in the same plane. Okay? Take a deep breath in, blow it out. Take another deep breath in and make your exposure. Okay? Now, if fluid, okay, what position are they in right here? Lateral. lateral. Okay, lateral. it's a decubitus, but it's a left lateral, lateral. decubitus because they are mm -hmm. laying on their left side. Is it an AP or PA projection? It's an AP. AP. It's an AP projection. Okay. You can also do a PA projection, okay, with them laying on their left side, except their head will be at the opposite end. Does that make sense? They're still on their left side, but if their head was at the opposite mm -hmm. end, now it'll be laying like this. Mm -hmm. That's that, PA. Does that affect the... Um, no. You know, no. <laughs> no. 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 No, what's your question? Oh. Does you that forgot? affect the penetration of the... Do you know how, like, the anode and cathode side? Okay. Yes, yeah. yes and no. Yes and no. Yes. If we were doing film, oh. C, CR or, or DR, it corrects everything for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a damn good question. <laughs> okay, I'm over it. <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. Okay. But again, so you can still accomplish a left lateral the cube by which end of the table or the end of the gurney they're in. So it can either be AP or PA. Same thing with the right. 
you can change it from AP to PA based on what end of the table or bed they're on. Okay, but it's still a left lateral VQ. It's still a right lateral VQ. All right. So if we're looking at fluid levels, we're looking at the side down. So this is a left lateral of the cube. We're looking for fluid levels on the left lung. Okay? Yes? Yes. All right, pneumothorax. If we were looking at pneumothorax, okay, we're looking for free air in the peritoneal cavity. Okay, you guys all know what pneumothorax is, right? Mm -hmm. You do now? <laughs> if we're looking for pneumothorax, air in the pleural cavity, which lung are we looking at now? Are we looking at the lung that's side down? No. Or are we looking at the lung that's side up? Uh, side up. So, which brings to point, get good history on your patient to make sure you, that you are performing the right position projection. For air, for air, we're looking at the side up. For fluid, we're looking at the side down. So on the left lateral of the cube, for pneumothorax, we'd be looking at the right side. That makes sense? But it's got to be bilateral long, so we're going to get this picture of the whole. Right, but you, but again, <coughs> bless you, you get your patient history first because is it, are we looking for fluid levels? Or are we looking for pneumothorax? So once you determine that, then that will dictate which decubitus that you're going to do. Is it the left side or the right side? Yes, you're looking at both lungs for evaluation. But is it more specific for pneumothorax, where I want to look at the side up, or is it more specific for fluids where I'm looking at the side down? That will dictate what side they're laying on. But you're, you're correct in that you have to include both lungs on there. Okay? So here is a left lateral the cube. This is why it's important to prop the patient up, because if you don't, there's a likelihood that you will clip off the lateral edge of the lower lung. Okay? So left lateral to Q. No rotation again by evaluating the joints. You can't really see it here. Okay? Uh, arms are not superimposed over the lungs, so full inspiration. Same thing here. You may only see between 8 to 9 versus 10. You can't see any on that one, basically. Well, you can't, yeah. So that was going to be my next question. Exposure factors, okay, exposure factors, again, we want long scale. Is this long scale? No. no. This is black and white, and I can't even see lungs, all right? So this is a poorly, uh, poor demonstration of the left lateral of the cube. I don't know why they use this for this slide. Do you have the same picture in your book? Yeah. The latest edition? Uh -huh. Is it the same one? Oh, no. It's a newer one? Okay. But again, chest x-rays, long scale, more grays. This is too short scale, too black and white. We do have appropriate penetration because we can't see behind the heart, but it's so dark, I can't even see lungs and lung markings. <clears throat> For the cubitus, you said we could also do it uh, supine or prone, right? What, what would be the purpose of those ones? Supine or prone? They're going like a lateral projection? All if they're laying on their back? Yeah. Um, this is this to demonstrate uh, <coughs> an aortic aneurysm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we'll cover that later on. Yes? Sorry, you were talking about um, propping it up for um, the virgin beam, right? Right. Is there any way, if you're doing a portable, not when, you, when there's a bucket tray right there, mm -hmm. when you're portable, mm -hmm. that you just put the tray, or put the IR mm -hmm. that's portable on the edge of the table lower? Below the level of the cushion? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that too. Okay. Yeah. But you can't do it on a an X-ray table no, no, because X-ray table has solid yeah. material. You can do that. You can do that on a bed where you place the image receptor below the level of the, the mattress or the cushion. Because you're just trying to get it in the middle of the right. IR. Yeah, you can so do it. Doesn't matter yeah. where the exactly. Water. So in that case, you you may not have to do it. Okay. But again, take into consideration you may have heavier patients that are sitting a lot lower on the mattress or the cushion, so you may need to prop them up. Guys, thinkers. Okay, AP lordotic. Any questions on the decubitus? All right, lordotic. The purpose of the lordotic is to rule out any calcifications and masses beneath the clavicles. What this does is by having them lean back, okay, it puts the clavicles up, okay, because we
we want to look at the apices of the lungs to evaluate for any type of masses or calcifications. More specifically, we can use this for uh, tuberculosis, where they like to congregate as of the apices of the lungs. Okay? So um, here, uh, this is AP. This is the exception. Remember in our AP, supine AP semi erect, where the, image was, uh, where the central ray was perpendicular to the sternum? Here we don't want that. Here we want the central ray perpendicular to the image receptor. Okay. Now another way that you can do this, and again, this is one of those tough positions where you're having the patient do this. It's hard to hold this position, especially if you're an elderly or you've got some kind of condition where you can't hold still for a long period of time. I'm going to do it like this. Now with the patient upright like so, what type of adjustment do I need to make now? Angle your tube. Angle of what? The x-ray the x-ray beam going about 15 to 20 degrees cephalic. Okay. We talked about this right at the beginning of the semester. Mm -hmm. Kind of yes, sir. What is RO again? What's what? RO is the purpose Uh rule rule out. Okay. Rule out. Alright. So this can also be done uh, upright. Again, we prefer to do it upright. This is just a demonstration with the patient supine. Again, if you can do it upright, let's do it upright. Central ray, okay, nothing changes. It's a chest x-ray, so we're going to center our, our central ray at the level of T7, finding it several ways, three to four inches below the sternal notch, six to seven inches if they were PA below the vertebral prominence, or in this case, like I said, one of the easiest things to do is just place the top of your light field just a little bit above the vertebral prominence. Okay. Here, as demonstrated with a patient, again, hand on their hip, we want their roll their shoulders forward to get the scapula, scapulae out of the way. Right. Scapulae is what? It's, it's plural, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, scapulae out of the way. <laughs> yes? Would you shield anything other than gonads there? No. So the question was, should I shield anything other than gonads? Well, if we put the uh, thyroid shield on here, it's not very common to see, to see um, anybody shielding the thyroids, especially if you're doing a chest x-ray. It gets a little bit uncovered, only because they, they think they might get in the way of the image, because your thyroid is kind of right at the level where your apices are, okay, and it can get in the way, and then you end up having to do it again. So 